Hi everyone, in today's video I'd like to share with you some tips about Chopin's Opus 10 number 1 etude. Um, this is an etude that has given a lot of people a lot of trouble. It's, it's one of the more difficult ones for sure, of certainly of Opus 10 and perhaps even of the entire 24 uh, etudes or 27 if you include the three nouvelle etudes. Um, so for me technique is not just about hitting the right notes and about producing the sound that you want, those are obviously very important. But for me, there's a third component of technique that is as important, if not more, and that is playing comfortably, so without tension, doing what you want to do at the piano without hurting yourself. And I hope that today's tips that I've prepared for you will help in that regard. So I hope that they will help you to be able to play it maybe a little bit more comfortably without having to struggle to get through the piece as much, because I struggled with this piece for quite a long time. And this is a distillation, you could say, of what I've found to be some of the more effective ways of uh, working on the piece or practicing it or just thinking about it. So let's move on to the first tip. So my first tip is to think about gliding from note to note as opposed to stretching to reach them. I found that avoiding all stretching really helps with reducing tension and uh, general comfort in this piece. And the way I like to think about gliding from note to note is think about the arm and the wrist as sort of carrying your fingers from note to note. And really the arm and the, the wrist together, they carry the hand. All the fingers have to do is press down when they're in position. So you shouldn't have to reach with your fingers to get to the next position. Um, it should mo that part should mostly be done by the arm and the wrist together. And really making sure that you're aligning aligning everything uh, as much as possible with the pinky as opposed to with the thumb because this is a little bit twisted. This will generally create some tension if you're in this position for a long time or if it's bent even more like that of course it will cause uh, tension. But I've found that aligning with the pinky in this way is very helpful. So try to find that position on each note, um, the most comfortable position on each note where the wrist, the arm, um, the hand, everything is aligned as much as possible and where the fingers have to do a minimal of, amount of work. Um, so you're not relying only on the fingers to play. And I'll show you how I like to practice that. This is actually taken from uh, Courteau's edition of the Chopin Etudes. This is one of his suggested exercises. And I found it really helpful for getting to know the intervals between notes. So getting to know how much you have to shift your arm between each note. And for larger intervals, of course, you're going to have to do a quicker, larger shift. And then for some of the smaller intervals, it will be almost imperceptible at times but I'll just show you how I like to practice this. Now, when you first start each group of two notes, they generally start quite far down on the piano. So you want to move in whatever way is necessary uh, to avoid bending the wrist in this way to reach that first note. Of course, it might you might have to bend it just ever so slightly because it is very far down, especially this first C, um, but just really try to avoid twisting and bending like that. And once you've found that position that's comfortable for the first note, that feels pretty good to me. Move on to the second. So again, shifting the arm and the wrist as much as possible to position your second finger on the next note. And just getting used to the feeling of that interval. So that's a fifth, and then we move up. So again, that feels pretty centered, pretty aligned. My fourth finger doesn't feel weak because it has the support of the whole arm behind it. getting used to the different intervals going back and forth like that and this as I said this is in the um, the exercises to opus 10 number one in Courtois edition so you can look this up I think it's on the second page of the exercises but it's pretty basic you just essentially um, are going back and forth between the notes to get used to the intervals especially paying attention to how much you need to shift your arm between each one that's the most important thing I would say and just really making sure your fingers aren't reaching to the next note so here, there's an almost imperceptible shift to the arm because it's just a third. It's a very small interval. My second tip is to try to group notes around the thumb. So as you can see, the thumb is shaped differently from the other fingers, which means it also needs to be used slightly differently. And the way that I like to use the thumb is to combine the thumb motion itself with a little bit of forearm rotation. So rotating from this bone, imagining this whole thing is one 
unit, and this is like the fixed axis. This one doesn't move, so you're rotating around this one, and this whole thing is moving together, so the thumb has lots of support from the arm. And uh, try not to imagine rotating from the wrist. I find that, that that tightens things up and makes it stiff. So imagine that this is all one unit, this whole bone is all one unit, and you're rotating it together. And combining a bit of forearm rotation with some active movement of the thumb is also important. So it's not one or the other, it's just finding the right balance between the two. And what I meant by grouping notes around the thumb is because the thumb requires a different motion, I find it's easy to, not just in this piece, but in general when I'm playing, I tend to organize things around the thumb because I know that I'm going to need to use a little bit of forearm rotation on each thumb stroke just to give it that support. Um, it just gives you kind of something, a physical anchor or a physical um, goal to help sort of orient and uh, choreograph your movements at the piano. So for instance, in this piece, because each group of four notes starts with a thumb stroke, thumb, thumb, and each one requires a slight downward motion, at least with the forearm, a slight, slightly different motion from the other fingers. I find it's it's best to to organize my these little swings that happen once you get the uh, the feeling of the piece and you're you're moving around the keyboard. I find it's it's helpful just to think about each th thumb stroke carefully and to prepare it so that it has the support of the forearm. It's not just acting in isolation, and that will also help to cut out a lot of tension. The third tip is to try to adjust your body from side to side as necessary. Um, so if you watch most pianists playing this, you'll notice that they, they tend to, to shift, shift the body from side to side slightly as they're playing, because obviously we have to cover a very large portion of the keyboard. So as you're playing, just as necessary, when you when you're going up into the higher registers, for instance, of course, shift a little bit to the right, and then when you come back down, shift to the left. And that, that alone actually helps um, to position your arm so you don't feel like you're, you're overextended or you're, you're cramped here and you're twisting, like especially when you get down to the start of each group of two bars when you have that low thumb note. That's a very easy spot to accumulate tension just because you're so low and you tend to, to want to do it only with the wrist. But just, just remember to shift over with the body a little bit. That will help a lot. And my fourth and final tip, this is probably the easiest one to implement along with number three, is just to simply remember to relax the left hand after you've played each octave. So this etude, it doesn't have a difficult left hand part, but it is easy to forget to let go of those octaves, not literally letting go of the keyboard, but just once you've played them, just relax the hand. You don't have to keep gripping it tightly like that because that will affect the rest of your body as well. That will make everything more tense. And this was a mistake I was making for a while. I, I had more or less figured out where the tension spots were in the right hand and was doing pretty well with that. But there would still be times when there would be tension and I couldn't figure out why because it seemed like I was doing everything okay with the right hand. And then all of a sudden one day I noticed that I was gripping those left hand notes with, just unconsciously because I was so focused on trying to get the right hand right. Um, so that's just something very simple to look out for in case you might be doing that. That's all for today's video, just those four tips that I thought were helpful for me at least. They certainly um, made a big difference in my playing. I hope they'll be helpful for you as well. Just keep in mind that um, this piece is absolutely possible to play without tension, without discomfort. You just have to be patient, really work on it one bar at a time, one note at a time, even when you're first starting, uh, like I showed in the first step uh, using that exercise. Um, really just focusing more, I've noticed, on lateral side to side and in and out motion as opposed to using too much wrist. Of course, there has to be some wrist motion. The wrist has to be flexible um, and to, to move and bend when needed. But I found that if I exaggerated any kind of motion, whether it was with the arm or with the fingers, too much stretching or with the wrist, any kind of exaggeration tended to lead to tension. So just something to keep in mind when you're practicing. Try to keep things as smooth, find the smoothest way to get from point A to B. Um, from each note as um, as possible. So um, let me know in the comments if you have any questions, if you're having issues with tension, I'd be happy to talk about it. Um, I'm always interested in finding ways to cut down on tension in my own playing and to help students and other people to do the same. So um, feel free to leave a comment and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you for watching.